So let's now proceed to your sublingual. A drug that is placed under the tongue where it dissolves. When a medication is encapsulated and ordered sublingually, the fluid must be aspirated from the capsule and placed under the tongue. Okay. We also have advantages in your sublingual. Okay. So it is the same as oral, administered for local effects, and rapidly absorbed in the bloodstream. So under your tongue, we have a lot of blood vessels. Okay. So when we place medication there, so it is directly absorbed into your bloodstream through your blood vessels. Okay. So that is why it is rapidly absorbed in the bloodstream. However, we also have disadvantages of this route. If swallowed, the drug may be inactivated by gastric juices and must remain in the tongue until disso dissolved and absorbed. So remember that if your patient swallowed this drug, okay, your acids in your stomach will, deact will inactivate this medication. Okay? So it will not serve its purpose. We also have your buccal. Okay? A medication is held in the mouth against the mucous membranes of the cheek until the drug dissolves. Should not be chewed, swallowed, or placed under the tongue. Okay? It should be put only in your buc uh, buccal or mucous membrane. We also have advantages. So the same as oral, administered for local effects. It ensures greater potency because drugs directly enters the blood and bypass the liver. Okay, as what I have said, there are blood vessels present in your buccal mucosa. Okay, so it direct it directly goes to your bloodstream. However, we also have disadvantages or disadvantage for your buccal uh, route. If swallowed, drug may be inactivated by your gastric juices. We also have your topical. So these are medication applied through your skin. So that's your dermatologic. Ophthalmic through your eyes. Optic to your ears. Nasal to your nose. Inhalation can be through your nose or your mouth, and vagina, okay? For dermato uh, dermatologic, it includes lotions, liniments, and ointments. Wash and pat dry area well before application to facilitate absorption, okay? So you use surgical asepsis or sterile technique when open wound is present. Remove previous application before the next medication in order to promote absorption of the medication to your skin. Apply only thin layer of medication to prevent systemic absorption. Use gloves when applying the medication over a large surface. We also have your ophthalmic. It includes installation and irrigation in your eyes okay so ophthalmic medication is used for your eyes it is eye medications okay so for your installation the purpose of that is to provide an eye medication that the client requires for your irrigation to clear the eye of noxious or other foreign materials so that is the difference between your installation and irrigation according to its purpose When administering this medication, you have to position the client either sitting or lying. Use sterile technique. Clean the eyelid and eyelashes with sterile cotton balls moistened with sterile NSS from the inner to outer canthus. And instill eye drops into the lower conjunctival sac. Okay? Instill a maximum of two drops at a time. Wait for 5 minutes if additional drops are needed in order to lessen uh, absorption.
Okay, faster absorption. Avoid dropping a solution into the cornea directly because it causes discomfort. Okay, so remember that you have to administer it at your lower conjunctival sac. Instruct the client to close the eyes gently. Okay. For liquid eye medication, press firmly on the nasolacrimal duct or inner canthus for at least 30 seconds to prevent systemic absorption. We also have otic medication. This is for your ears. These are your ear medications. Includes installations and irrigations. So for your installation, the purpose of this is to soften, or to soften, to soften ear wax, to reduce inflammation and treat infection, to relieve pain. For your irrigation, the purposes are to remove cerumen or pus, to apply heat, and to remove foreign body. Okay. So when administering otic medication or ear medication, we warm the solution at room or body temperature first, then position the patient in side-lying position with the ear being treated uppermost. Clean the pina and miatus of the ear canal with cotton-tipped applicator. Straighten the ear canal. So for children 0 to 3 years old, you pull the pina down and backward. For older than 3 years old, you pull the pina up and backward. This is to straighten the ear canal for, for the administration of your ear or otic drops or medication. Instill ear drops on the side of the auditory canal. Press gently but firmly a few times in the tragus of the ear and ask the client to remain in side-lying position for about 5 minutes. So I would like to emphasize here to instill eardrops on the side of the auditory canal. So you have to avoid uh, administering or putting drops or medication directly to the ear. So you have to administer it at the side or at the wall of your auditory canal okay to gradually administer the medication okay insert a small piece of cotton fluff loosely at the meatus of the auditory canal for 15 to 20 minutes this is to prevent leakage of medication from your ears going outside okay we also have nasal route of administering medication. So nasal installation usually are instilled for their astringent effects, so to shrink swollen mucous membrane. Okay? Especially for those patients who are experiencing nasal congestion. Okay? Another we have uh, to loosen secretions to facilitate drainage and to treat infections of the nasal cavity or sinuses. So first, you have to let the client blow his or her nose prior to nasal installation. Assume back lying position or sit up and lean head backward. Elevate the nares slightly by pressing the thumb against the client's tip of the nose while the client inhales. Squeeze the bottle. Keep the head tilted backwards for 5 minutes after installation of nasal drops. This is to promote absorption. When the medication is used on a daily basis, alternate nares to prevent irritation. For sinus installation, we use uh, Parkinson's position for frontal and maxillary sinuses and Prowitz's Pro position for ethmoid and sphenoid sinuses okay so for your parkinson's position this is a position so you let the client assume a, a supine position with the head turned to the affected side to be treated okay so that is your parkinson's position 
your prowet's position is the client will lie supine with his or her head leaning back over the side of the bed to avoid muscle strain on the client's neck. Okay, so that's your prowet's position. Okay, so remember those two types of position used for sinus installation. For your inhalation, here we use uh, we, uh, the use of nebulizers, metered dose inhalers or your MDI. So you will position the patient either in semi fowler, semi fowlers or high fowlers position or standing position. So shake the canister several times. Position mouthpiece 1 to 2 inches from the client's open mouth. Then as the client starts inhaling, press the canister down to release one dose of the medication. So I have a picture here. A, wom a, a woman who is uh, administering a canister. Okay, administering uh, an inhalation uh, medication by the use of a canister. Okay. So that yellow uh, canister, uh, that is a yellow uh, canister that is used for your inhalation uh, route of medication administration. Instruct the client to hold uh, breath for 10 seconds. If bronchodilator, administer a maximum of two puffs for at least 30 seconds interval. Administer bronchodilators before other inhalation medication. This is to dilate the bronchial so that it would be easy for the uh, inhalation medication to uh, to be absorbed okay wait at least one minute before administration of the second dose or inhalation of a different medication of meter dosed inhaler or your MDI instruct the client to rinse mouth if steroid had been administered that is to prevent fungal infection, okay? We also have your vaginal, okay? The advantage of administering medication through your vagina is to provide local therapeutic effect. And the disadvantage is has limited use, okay? So the drug forms of medication administered through your vag vagina is uh, are tablet we also have liquid form used for douche douche sorry douche cream jelly foam and suppository okay use of applicator or sterile gloves for va vaginal administration of medication so you have to use either applicator or a sterile glove so we have here vaginal irrigation, the washing of the vagina by a liquid at low pressure. Okay, so you irrigate, okay, just to uh, remove those noxious um, substances, okay, or materials inside your, uh, inside the vagina, okay. Also called as douche, okay. Vaginal irrigation. Empty the bladder first before the procedure. So position and drape the client. So we have here two types, the installation and irrigation. For your installation, you position the patient back lying position with knees flexed and hips rotated laterally. For your irrigation, back lying position with the hips higher than the shoulders. You use bedpan. And irrigating container should be 30 uh, centimeters or 12 inches above okay so that it could be uh, so that there will be a uh, pressure okay going down through by the use of gravity okay it should be 30 centimeters or 12 inches above the uh, site ask the client to remain in bed for 5 to 10 minutes following administration of vaginal suppository cream foam jelly or irrigation it is to uh, promote absorption and so that the vaginal suppository cream foam will be 
will stay there, okay? Will stay at the uh, at the vagina and it will not be uh, dislodged, okay? When he or she stands. We also have rectal, okay? The advantages, the advantage, the advantage of administering drugs rectally is it can be used when the drug has objectionable taste or odor, okay? So if the patient could not take it orally because of these factors, because of taste, of terrible taste and odor, so you can give it rectally. However, the disadvantage of this uh, rectal route, the dose absorbed is unpredictable, okay? Because remember, your intestine can actually absorb, uh, is good for absorption, and sometimes patients could actually uh, expulse, okay? Could uh, let the medication eliminated from the, from the body. Okay, so we could not predict the amount of dose that is absorbed by the patient. So that's the main disadvantage of uh, administering medication through rectum or through the or rectally. Okay, so need to be refrigerated as so as not to soften. So especially if we give. Uh, suppositories, rectal suppositories, so we have to refrigerate it, okay? Because if we don't, it will soften and it could, uh, and we could um, hardly administer it through the rectum. It, we could have difficulty in, by way of inserting that medication in to, uh, to the rectum if it is softened. Use glove for insertion of suppositories. Have client lie on left side and breathe through the mouth to relax the anal sphincter. So we have to instruct this to our patient, okay? So that we could easily insert the suppository through the rectum, okay? Insert suppository until a sensation of as if something has grabbed it away, okay? So... The one who administers the suppository uh, to the rectum, they could actually feel it, okay? That as if someone has grabbed that medication away. So that means it has already uh, inserted properly. Ensure that the suppository comes in contact with the rectal wall, okay? So that uh, it could be absorbed through the walls of your rectum, okay? 